Well, I want to appreciate you students from St. Pius X for coming to the Capitol and visiting here. Hope you had a great day. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to visit with you. We were a little busy that day. But I do appreciate the letters that you all sent and the questions that you had, and I'd like to address some of those questions today. Uh, the first question was from Hudson. It says, if you work with another senator on a bill, whose authority would it fall under? Well, generally when we uh, work together with senators, generally one person will take the lead, but it's agreed upon uh, in that order that we just work together. We, we try to down here. Uh, Elijah had a question. It says, what is it like to be in a filibuster? I would say very painful. Uh, when we have to listen to things that have no relation to the topic that we're on, that is when it's uh, uh, those topics such as Star Wars, and actually some of it is interesting when you get into history lessons, but still it, it is not the business that we're dealing with, and it's time to move on. Um, like I said, filibusters, they're not fun. Dylan uh, has a question, says, what helps you make decisions on bills that you support? I say the most important thing is research and facts. Those are the most important. If we can have the research done and get the facts, that helps to guide us in, in our response to those bills and those issues. Dylan also had another question. It says, how long does it take to write a bill? Well, actually, Dylan, a bill starts as an idea. And uh, then we pass that idea on to our Senate research staff, and they make sure that it is uh, drafted correctly and drafted to the right section in, in which it might apply. Uh, there's more specific questions in some of this and Weston had a question. It says, why did you support a bill on video conferencing? Well, that's a bill that deals with uh, the prisoners that we have in our jails and allowing that video conference to take place. That is a safety procedure and it also cuts down on cost to the state. When you transport those criminals from jails to uh, before a judge, that transportation, that is a, that's a safety issue. Besides being out on the roads, it also gives them an opportunity for possibly an escape and harming somebody. Uh, Caroline says, why did you make a bill based on political parties? Well, what that bill actually does, it allows all political party committees to work better and more effectively. Uh, in the process that we have now, there's some things that we could streamline, such as dates and that type of stuff. And Hudson says, why do you want to remove the ban on concealed carry in higher education systems? Well, I feel that individuals who are duly qualified to carry and protect themselves should be able to protect themselves regardless where they're at, truthfully. Uh, but right now, colleges are, the college campuses are gun-free zones. And as we have looked at the research and facts, it appears that a lot of the terrorists and those deranged individuals that like to commit those types of murder, mass murders, they target those gun-free zones, and that's exactly what a college campus is. Um, okay, and Quentin said, why did you make a bill about fertilizer? Well, fertilizer is very important to agriculture. We also use it on golf courses, and a lot of it's used in yards. But what we have is a fertilizer control board in the bill that I set up, and that is any money that's collected uh, actually make sure that the research is done. And that research hopefully will make us better stewards of the environment as farmers and as uh, producers. Quentin also had another question. It said, why did you withdraw Senate Bill 770 and what is it about? Well, it was a Missouri qualified gaseous biofuel producer incentive fund. And the original draft had a decimal point that was out of place. Uh, very important issue. And uh, that's why it's important that you study math. Um, it also, that bill also gives an incentive to green energy. Uh, went ahead and refiled a bill. We got the decimal point in the right place. We'll get it done. Uh, Logan had a question. He says, why did you write a bill about technical education? I've always supported career and tech programs. There are a lot of great jobs, opportunities for those out there with the proper skills. And with the career and tech programs, that's how we allow people to gain those, those skills. And Logan 
Another question, it says, why are you concerned with industrial hemp? Really, I'm not concerned with industrial hemp, but what I'd like to do is it's another alternative crop that I feel that we could be raising here in Missouri. And unfortunately, some people are confused about its relationship to marijuana, but industrial hemp is low in the THC, which tends to make people high. THC is actually what's in marijuana. Industrial hemp will not make you high, but it has a lot of good uses in industrial type operations. And Brady says, why did you combine Senate Bill 620, the CTE Advisory Council? Actually, that was combined with another bill that had a lot of the same issues on education and uh, felt it was a good opportunity to combine those bills. Uh, they were both good. They fit well together. And Elijah had a question. says, did you know that Senate Bill 885, Show Me Rural Jobs Act, is the same as Representative Redmond's? Yes, I did. And uh, that was by design. Uh, it is always a good thing down here in the legislature if we can have a Senate bill that mirrors a House bill. Uh, we have opportunities, I'd say twice the opportunity to get that bill passed because we have a House bill and a Senate bill. I, like I say, I want to thank you all for visiting the Capitol. Hope you had a great day. Sorry I was unable to visit with you, but uh, appreciate the questions too and wish you a good year.